Good afternoon, class. Uh, today, we'll be talking about the female reproductive endocrinology as part of our endocrine module for internal medicine too. So again, I'm Dr. Anna Angelica Makalalad Hoswe. Welcome to today's flip class. So for today's topic, this we will be talking about um, a review of the female reproductive physiology. We'll review the events that happen during puberty, and then we'll move on to discuss the disorders of the female reproductive system. And then lastly, we'll talk briefly about um, menopause and hormone replacement therapy. So the female hormonal system is again governed by the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. So again, a review. So you have your pulsatile GnRH coming from the arcuate nucleus of your hypothalamus that stimulates your anterior pituitary to secrete your gonadotropins, FSH, and LH. And your FSH and LH will now stimulate your ovaries to initiate ovarian steroidogenesis in the ovarian follicle and the corpus luteum, depending on which stage of the uh, female reproductive cycle. And your FSH and LH is also involved in the development of your follicles after the antral stage, stage as well as the induction of your ovulation and luteinization after ovulation. And your ovaries now uh, will be secreting your estrogen and your progesterone and your inhibin and your estrogen now will provide either a positive feed mostly a positive feedback to your anterior pituitary to in gradually increase the secretion of your lh and fsh to produce your um lh surge so we'll talk more about that in detail when we discuss the uh, menstrual cycle okay so going back so this um, access is unique because it the end the hormones not only provide negative feedback to your hypothalamus and your pituitary but to a certain level it can also provide a positive feedback as with the um, induction of your LH surge to produce your ovulation okay so as I was saying this is your female monthly reproductive cycle I hope you still remember this from physiology so you have your ovarian cycle and then your body temperature also changes with the monthly cycle and this graph reflects the fluctuation of your gonadotropins your FSH and your LH from the anterior pituitary and this graph represents the fluctuations of your ovarian hormones your estradiol and your progesterone and this part of this graph shows the uterine cycle the stages of the um the menses where your uterine lining starts to slough off and then the growth of your uterine arteries and thickening of your endometrium and then back to your menses again so again this a uh, female menstrual cycle is governed again by the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. So your female monthly sexual cycle can divide can be divided into several phases. Um, your follicular phase from day zero. Day zero is um, the start of your first day of your menses up to the mid cycle. Usually it's day fourteen. And then in the mid-cycle in day 14, you have your ovulation, which is followed by your luteal phase because this is mostly governed by hormones secreted by your corpus luteum. Therefore, it's called the luteal phase. This is from day 14 to 28. And then your menses will now commence again and usually will start from um, day 0 to day 4, depending on the length of the um, menses of the of the um, female um, patient so the monthly sexual cycles of females can vary so the usual cycle is 28 days there are 
um, females who will have 25 day cycles there are females who have irregular sometimes it's 24 sometimes it's 27 sometimes it's 29 so there are patients who menstruate on the dot every 28 days so um, this monthly sexual cycle um, durations of the different phases can vary from female to female okay so we discussed now the first phase of your menstrual cycle your follicular phase which begins with the new um, follicle that is selected which will start to grow okay depending on the stimulation of your um, anterior pituitary hormones particularly your um, FSH, your follicle stimulating hormone. So at the beginning, you will have a gradual increase of your FSH, which will now stimulate the release of your estradiol. And your estradiol now will, pro will the gradual increase of your estradiol will now stimulate the, will provide a positive feedback to your LH, and to a second, to a lesser degree, your S, your FSH, and the positive feedback of estradiol and the continuous increase of your LH will now result into your LH surge, and your LS, LH surge will now result into your ovulation. And also during this time, you will have a gradual increase, uh, actually a, a, a big increase in the um, basal body temperature. And then on the um, the estradiol levels will increase and cause the the increase in the estradiol levels will now also cause a gradual proliferation of the uterus. At this time, the progesterone levels are still very low okay so after your um the burst of estradiol synthesis at the end of the follicular phase here as i mentioned earlier will now stimulate the sudden increase in your lh and to a lesser degree your fsh resulting in your ovulation and then the lh surge um is induced by estrogen and the LH um, now converts your granulosa cells and theca cells to progesterone secreting cells. And your LH also results in rapid growth of the follicle here. And the diminishing estrogen secretion after a prolonged phase of excessive um, estrogen secretion will now um, contribute to the conversion of your granulosa cells and theca cells into progesterone secreting cells. Okay? So in the luteal phase, it's the corpus luteum that's the predominant um, the predominant player and this is the time when your corpus luteum will start to develop and your corpus luteum now will start synthesizing estrogen, both your estrogen and progesterone. But it's more of progesterone that's being secreted. And because of the increase in the progesterone here, it will send a signal to your hypothala hypothalamic thermoregulatory center, which will um, increase the basal body temperature of the female. And then if fertilization does not occur, your corpus luteum will start to regress and become your corpus albicans. And with the regression of your corpus luteum, there will be a sudden drop in your estradiol and your progesterone. And the sudden drop in your progesterone and estradiol will now cause the sloughing off of your menses because of the lack of um, estrogen and progesterone um, stimulation. So again, the, during the luteal phase of your menstrual cycle, after ovulation, your follicle will now be converted into your corpus luteum, which is um, the main pro uh, producer of your 
um, progesterone as well as your estrogen estrogen and you this um, follicle will now undergo luteinization and your lutein cells will enlarge um, to two or more times and become filled with lipid inclusions that give it a yellowish secretion and when fertilization does not occur the drop in estrogen and progesterone uh, the, the this one will regress and the regression will cause the loss of your estrogen and progesterone secretion and the involution of your corpus luteum will now for be will now appear as a corpus albicans so after 12 days after ovulation your corpus luteum will involute and eventually lose its secretory function and afterwards shortly afterwards you will have your menses so in the luteal phase of the ovarian cycle um your estrogen in particular and progesterone to a lesser extent will be will stimulate will um, provide a negative feedback to your anterior pituitary and you will have low secretory rates of both your fsh and lh and then um, when your corpus luteum involutes, there will be a sudden cessation of estrogen and progesterone producing your menstruation. And because of the sudden drop of your estrogen and progesterone, there, the negative feedback inhibition into the anterior pituitary is removed and your pituitary gland will now start secreting FSH and LH again. And the secretion of your FSH again will now stimulate the growth of a new um follicle and the start of a new ovarian cycle so how are your estrogen and progesterone um secreted in your ovary so in the pre-ovulatory follicle your the pre-ovulatory follicle produces estradiol through a paracrine interaction between your theca and your granulosa cell. In response to a stimulation from agonadotropine, particularly your LH, um, it will now stimulate the, your LH um, receptor to stimulate um, a downstream reaction resulting in the entry of your cholesterol to their inner mitochondrial membrane, which is again facilitated by the first rate-limiting enzyme in ovarian steroidogenesis which is again star and the end product will be your androstenedione. dione and your androstenedione dione um, will now go to your granulosa cells will diffuse into your granulosa cells um, oops and your granulosa cells upon the stimulation of your fsh will now um, trigger the synthesis of your aromatase enzyme and the aromatase enzyme will now convert your androstenedione dione to your estrone and your estrone will now be converted to your estradiol and your estradiol will now diffuse into your um, blood vessels and circulate into your system and also into your follicular fluid okay so to summarize that in the theca cells, so LT, it will be stimulated by your LH and your LH will now trigger the conversion of your cholesterol down to your androstenedione and your androstenedione can either be converted to your testosterone or directly diffused into your nearby granulosa cell and your FSH now will FG. So your FSH now will stimulate the, the expression of your aromatase enzyme and your aromatase enzyme will now convert your androstenedione or your testosterone into your estrone and eventually to your estradiol. How about after ovulation when the corpus luteum will now be the predominant player? So it's 
this figure looks complicated, but it's not actually that. Um, it's actually very similar to the preovulatory follicle, only with a few differences. So at this time, remember your corpus luteum uh, will now be more heavily vascularized, and because of the increase in vascularization, um, a condition the increase in vascularization will now provide the entry of abundant quantities of your cholesterol from your circulation. So mostly your LDL. And your LDL now will provide the substrate cholesterol and your cholesterol now will again enter your mitochondrion to the first limiting enzyme in ovarian steroidogenesis, which is your star. And this now will trigger the conversion of your cholesterol to pregnenolone and eventually to your progesterone. And your progesterone now will um, diffuse into your nearby blood vessels to be released into the um, circulation. So again, your corpus luteum produces a lot of progesterone levels. And aside from that, upon the stimulation also um, of your FSH, there will be a downstream um, re reaction that results in the expression of your CYP19-alpha-1, which is your aromatase, and therefore facilitates the conversion of your androstenedione to your estrone and eventually to your estradiol. Now, this androstenedione can also be provided by your theca lutein cells, um, similar to the preovulatory follicle. So, upon the um, stimulation of your LH, it will now stimulate the synthesis of your androstenedione from your cholesterol again and your androstenedione will diffuse through a paracrine manner into the nearby granulosa cells that can be a precursor for your the production of your estrone and your estradiol. So let's pause for a while. Okay. <laughs> 